Detroit is an iconic American city because it's been the home of the country's car industry and Americans have a love affair with the car like no country on earth. But as that industry has crumbled and buckled in recent decades, Detroit's fortunes too have waned. It's suffered years and years of chronic population loss, unemployment and rising debt. Now efforts to revive the city centre are causing tensions between some new revitalised pockets and areas that haven't got back on their feet. From Detroit, Ben Knight reports. Walking through Detroit can feel a bit like being in a ghost town. But the souls that once walked these halls are still very much alive. It's just that they moved away. Whoa. This is one of almost 80 abandoned schools in Detroit. Now, it's just another attraction on Jesse Welter's tour of the decaying city. So why did these schools close down? Um, basically, their schools and churches are all founded on the uh the people that are living here. And then we used to have a population of over 2 million. Now we're down to under 700,000. So there's just simply not enough kids to go to the school. Right, yep. yeah. This school only closed down a year ago, but it's been trashed. I mean, this is amazing. My, my school never had a swimming pool. And yet, look at this. I mean, it's got a big one. And here it is going to waste. I mean, who is going to buy this? What are they going to do with it? Can you see a time when that might happen? Um, not really. I think it's more like a, probably the land value at this point. So it is with tens of thousands of abandoned buildings here. Not just schools, but hotels, churches, office buildings. All of them stripped for any piece of scrap metal they contained. A lot of people going through a lot of hard times. Um, a lot of you know, scrapping, destroying of buildings um, because you can't, people can't find jobs. Hey, um, it's hard to comprehend that you're in a major first world city in the richest country on earth. The city itself declared bankruptcy, no longer able to pay for services like street lighting, garbage collection, even police. A lot of neighbourhoods still don't even have a supermarket. But at last, Detroit is coming back. Last month, it came out of its bankruptcy. Invest Detroit is proud to have brought its resources to the Strathmore redevelopment. Big investors are moving in, redeveloping long abandoned buildings like the Strathmore Hotel. As I watch this, I'm not going to forget the days when I saw the prostitutes and the drug dealers standing out on that sidewalk like they own this block. Uh, and uh, very shortly, it's going to be filled uh, with residents in, in For Detroit in natives Sioux, like said, Monica Casillos Rios, uh, it's exciting to see. She's been covering Detroit's resurgence on her Detroit Girl blog, especially what's happening in the neighbourhoods where young millennials like her are moving in and starting up. You come here and you can make a living here, like starting a business here, because it's so easy. If businesses are like buildings themselves are so inexpensive that you can open up a business and have it thrive because it's something new. It's like new businesses, new restaurants opening, I would say like every month. Um, and move, more people moving into the city as well. But the pockets of progress are small. You don't have to go far to find the other Detroit. And out here, things are about to get a lot worse. Well, this is one of the harder hit neighborhoods in the city. And not Rebecca the, Thompson is a Detroit native too. She moved back here three years ago. And I am one of those young people that we talk about who wants to be a part of Detroit's turnaround and is contributing. Um, but coming to a city that was on the verge of bankruptcy, where your street lights weren't on and where your trash wasn't going to get picked up, was a harsh reality and it was very different than living in Washington, D.C. She works for a Detroit welfare agency, trying to keep these empty neighborhoods alive. And when I was growing up in this city, it didn't look like that. Um, but you also have safety concerns. So these houses are uh, being set on fire or they're drug dens or they're just havens for crime. So you're talking about hardworking families that are surrounded by really awful conditions. And this all just happened around them? And it happened around them slowly over time. 
This year, the county will foreclose another 70,000 homes in Detroit over unpaid property taxes. One of the problems is that the taxes on these properties are so high because they were calculated on what these houses were worth during the boom years. You've got homes that a few years ago were worth $100,000 but can't sell for $5,000 now. For other Detroiters, that means opportunity. Well, yeah, this is really big, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big space. So you can pick something like this up in Detroit for less than $5,000. Yep. It's possible, yep. Through the auction. Sometimes cheaper. Jesse Welter and his partner Day Coppins bought this old plastics factory for $4,600. Uh, this is where we're going to have uh, artists' workspaces. We're gonna have it's in Highland studio, Park, the home of the first studio. Model T production line. Jesse's father rented a house off Henry Ford himself. So this is going to be a business for you guys as well as a home? Yep. The downside is you don't have any electricity, you don't have street lighting outside. No. What else? So. Um, this is going to be a lot of work. This is the fault line in Detroit's recovery. Every opportunity means someone else's loss. You have two worlds. Not everybody can afford the $1,000 a month apartment studios downtown where there's the quote-unquote rich uh, professional Detroit and then there's going to be the older um, black Detroit unfortunately um, and that's not you know it's not fair and but that's that's just how it's it's happening people are getting fed up um, the entrepreneurs who are getting funded tend to be white uh, and young and not from Detroit and so I think the, the business owners who have been here, who have stayed, are saying that's enough. Jesse and Day aren't cashed up young entrepreneurs. <laughs> They're locals, making their stake in the old Detroit, where the streetlights still don't work and the windows still need bars. Because it's just where we should be. I lived in a neighborhood where the people lived above their businesses. So I, it's kind of like, that's what I'm used to, and I, that's what I like. And, I like the city. Detroit still needs a lot of work and it needs good people in the city to help it out. It doesn't need the greedy corruption. Detroit needs people that cares. I think in five to ten years like this city will be an example for other cities struggling with the same things. Like we have gotten it before a lot of other cities um, but if we can make it anybody can and, and I'm really proud to be a part of that.